bless you. So glad to have you with us here again, here at God's Got a Plan. I'm excited about what God want to share with us today. I believe that God want to do something exciting and something new. Many of us today in the body of Christ, we do not quite know how to approach God. And when I say that, we don't know how to ask, you know, and I'm going to bring some points out today that I believe that's going to help us to be able to communicate a little bit better with God. All right. And with our father, or maybe I should say with the Lord Jesus Christ. OK, so uh, let's open up in a word of prayer. Father, we just pray your strength, your blessing right now. I pray that you would move in a very special way. Help us now to let go of any distractions and anything, Father, that would cause us not to be able to be attentive to what you want to do right now in our lives. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen and amen. The theme of today's show, the theme of today's show is ask anything in Jesus' name. Now, n notice now, I didn't just say ask for anything. I said ask anything. See, because it's not always about asking for stuff. You know, I, I might just need an understanding of something or whatever the case may be. It's not always about coming to God and saying, give me, give me, give me. Sometimes I might just say, Lord, I don't understand what's going on. Lord, can you help so-and-so and so? So I'm asking God for, I mean, many things in, in my daily walk with him. And I realize that I can bring any and everything that is on my mind, that comes up in my life, I can bring it to him. And I ask him how in Jesus' name. Look at John 14. John 14, starting at the 12th verse. And here's what it says. Here's what it says. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believes on me, on Jesus, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do. Did you hear what I said? This, in, this is in red, meaning this is the words of Jesus Christ. Jesus is telling you today, whatsoever you ask in his name, that will he do that so that the Father, God, may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. This is what Jesus is saying to you today. Whatever you ask for in his name, He's willing to do it. But I believe it is so very important that you know and understand what his will is for your life. You don't want to ask him to do something that, you know, that you're not called to do or that you know that would not be in line with his will or his word. That's why it's vitally important that you understand his word. Because when you have a, a good understanding, when you have the proper understanding of his word, you're going to bring those things to God that you know he's more inclined to do. So, you know, when we talk about potential, so look, we all have the potential within us to do great and wonderful things in this life. But who are you asking to help you get to where you need to be? And, and we need each other. People, hey, no man is sent here to live to be an island unto himself. We need each other. But I want you to understand that it's so very important that the primary, our primary relationship has to be with God. In other words, I'm seeking him. Why? Because he put something in me that he want to bring out. And I have the potential to do great and wonderful things. You have the potential to do great and wonderful things. You know, in all of us, we can get to that place where we feel something in our spirit like, I feel like I'm supposed to do something. I, I just don't quite know, understand what it is. I don't know how I'm going to bring it about and how I'm going to make it happen. But if you can just trust God today, 
if you can have some confidence in him, you know, something, let me tell you what potential is. Potential is something that is possible, but not yet realized. Something that is possible, but not yet manifested or realized. You know, and that can also happen even in our lives as a people. When I say our lives, someone is capable of being something but not yet in existence. It's not in existence yet. Why? Because you haven't allowed yourself to, let's just say, to grasp it in such a way where you can realize that God has put something in you. Oh, you are special to God. And what he put in you is special. So when we ask in Jesus' name, he's more inclined to do those things that he has called you to do. Now, now, let me give you some must, some must do things that you must do. Number one, you must believe in God. That's the, that's the first place to start. You must believe in God. You know, and, and, and I'm not just talking about talking about him because we've learned to talk a good talk, but our walk is a little shaky. You want to have that kind of relationship where you believe. See, your actions will speak louder than your words. Your actions, I'm talking about your activities. I'm talking about the things that will, 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 will bring about those things that will prove God evident, real in your life. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. So you have to have that God kind of faith. Mark 11:22 says, have faith in God. In other words, I know that God is able to do. I know God can turn my situation around. I know God can, can, can open that door that's been closed. I know God can restore. See, you have to know that you know that your God can do anything but fail. The Bible says he can't lie, he can't die. Water can't drown him and fire can't burn him up. Time can't wear him out. I'm talking about a God that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above what you can ask or think. According to the power that is in you, what's that power? That power is faith to believe. Can you believe me tonight? Can you believe him for yourself tonight? Can you believe him in your situation? Can you believe him in your trial, in your test? Can you believe him in your sickness? Can you believe him, Lord Jesus, in your marriage? Got to be able to take God at his word. Let me give you that second thing. Ask for what you want in the name of Jesus. That's what it says. That's what Jesus is saying to, to those of us who are in the body, in the family of God. In, the, in Christ. Those of us, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature, new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You don't have to keep looking at life the way it was in the past. Let go. You got to be able to release yourself from the past, those hurtful things of the past. Start asking God. The Bible says, speak those things that are not as if they are. And then you have to begin to act like you got to begin to walk in it. You got to begin to move in it. You got to have that God kind of faith that's going to be unconquerable. That's going to be, let's just say, uh, I, I, I refuse to doubt God. And I'm going to ask. I'm going to ask. And guess what? He just might surprise you. He want to blow your mind today. I don't know whether you're looking at this show in the daytime, in the evening. I want you to know that this is your day to be blessed. God wants you to know that he is, my God, he is so close to bringing about that answer to your prayer. Oh, understand that when you offer up a sincere prayer to God, God is a rewarder to them to, that diligently seek him. And God, my God, he says his word will not return void. It will accomplish what he sends it out to do. God want to bless you today. You're going to see the manifestation of that, that prayer. Some of you have been dealing with that prayer for, for months, for weeks. Some might have just offered up a prayer today. God will bring it about in his time. Sometimes we just have to be able to exercise some patience we have to have a confidence and a dependence upon God. Are you confident and dependent upon God? See, I, I want you to see it, it is so very important that, you know, 
No, I believe Proverbs, I believe Solomon says in Proverbs, uh, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. See, our own understanding will have us confident and dependent upon self. We will put our confidence and dependence upon others. But God is telling you today to be confident and dependent upon him. And if you can be confident and dependent upon him, God is telling me to tell you today, he's going to bring about an answer to your prayer. He's going to bring about an answer to that desire of your heart. Because Lord knows, he knows what you're carrying in your heart, what you're carrying in your spirit. But I'm here to tell you today that he can, he can make it happen for you. We've, we have tried it our way. And look at what has got us. The sleepless nights, the problems, the cares, the worries. And hey, we have to come to that place. That third key is we have to come in complete submission to him. We have to be submitted to him. We have to submit to God's will. When you can submit to God's will, oh, I'm here to tell you, boy, mm, mm, mm. humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and he will, what, exalt you. And that's what God want to do for you today. He wants you to know today that if you can just ask anything, ask anything, anything mean anything, mean everything. In other words, you can bring everything to the Lord. Bring everything to the Lord. Matter of fact, Bible says, cast all your prayers upon the Lord. Cast all your prayers upon the Lord. And he will give you the desires of your heart. You know? So, so, so look what Romans 12 and 1 says. Romans 12 and 1. Romans 12 and 1 says this. Romans 12 and 1 says this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service to him. Meaning that's the least you can do for a God who is waking you up every day. Are you hearing me? He's waking you up every day and you might not be walking or living that perfect life, which none of us can do. You might not be as close to him as you should be, but he's still waking you up. You're falling short in certain areas, but he's still waking you up. Your money might be a little funny, but he's still waking you up. Your relationship might be torn, but he's still waking you up. You might not be as active in church as you should be, but he's still waking you up. God loves you. Ask anything in the name of Jesus. But it would be a good thing if you was in the body of Christ. And I'm speaking to those of you who might be watching the program right now, and you might not be in Christ. You might not have that relationship with him. You need to come to Christ. You need to come to Jesus. You done tried everything. You done tried Mick, Bud, Crack, Dope, this, that, him, her. You done tried all kinds of things, and nothing has really worked for you. Well, I'm here to tell you today. I'm putting you on notice today. Jesus want to work for you today. He want to show you that he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble and in the time of need. But he don't want you to just want him when you have trouble and needs in your life. He want to be a 24-7 God. He want to be a 24-7 friend. If you don't know him, you need to come to him today. You need to seek him in the pardoning of your sins. And when you ask for anything, you got to ask believing. Let me give you another scripture. Psalms 86, 86 in five says this, Psalms 86 and five says this. It says, and this is David reminding us, for thou, Lord, are good and ready to forgive. Are you, did you hear what I said? He is ready to forgive you of whatever it is you've done. He used Moses who killed the man. He used David who had a man killed and, 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 and committed adultery with his wife. And if he can forgive them, I'm here to tell you he can forgive you. And look at what he says. Let me finish reading this now. For thou, Lord, art good. He's a good God. And ready to forgive. And plenteous in mercy. In other words, his mercy abounds. You could ne when we talk about mercy, we talk about grace. You can't out -sin God's grace. His grace will continue to abound. But will you sin needlessly knowing that grace will abound? You don't want to play with God like that. And look at what he says, plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon him. 
plenteous in mercy towards all of us, all of you who call upon him today. Be that day when you call upon him, when you ask anything according to the name of Jesus, anything in his name. Now, look what it says in James 1 and 6, because I want you to get this, because you have some double minded people in the body of Christ. You have some double minded people just going through, but you're not double minded. Here's what James says. But let him act in faith. Nothing wavering for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed about. And many of us are just tossed from pillar to post dealing with this, dealing with that, and just don't know which way to turn. You have to know that you know that you know that when you ask anything in Jesus name, you got to know that he's going to make it happen. He will give you the desires of your heart, but you want to be living something now too now. You can't be living any kind of way and expect God to bless you. Are you hearing me? You can't be living any kind of way and expect God to bless you. You want to come in a way that will be acceptable unto him. You want to be living your best life now to please him and him alone. Having confidence in Jesus. See, whoever you have confidence in, you have faith in. And you're more inclined to do those things. Look at 1 John 5 and 14. 1 John 5 and 14. 1 John 5 and 14 says this. And this is the confidence that I have in him, that if I act for anything according to his will, he will hear me. He will hear you. Isn't it good to know that you have a God that can hear you when you call? You know, we're complaining about a lot of things and we're talking to people that don't even really care about what we're going through. You know, we're calling them up on our phones. We're, we're meeting them on our jobs and wherever the place. At church, we, we, we just, I want you to understand when you seek the Lord, when you tell him what you're going through. See, sometimes we just got to stop complaining, stop talking about what we're going through and start talking about the one that's bringing me through, the one that's bringing you through. Because when you look back over your life, sometimes all we got to do is look back over our life. Slow down. I'm telling you right now, slow down and take a look back over your life. Look back over your life at the many things God has brought you through. The sickness, the disease, the pain, the jail, the programs, the drugs, the this, the alcohol, the gambling, the this, the prostitute. So many things we've been caught up in. And God has delivered. God has brought you through it all. But in spite of that, in spite of that, we still leave room or space for doubt. Don't doubt God. Don't doubt God. So the question today is, where's your confidence? Where is your confidence? Because where your confidence is, that's where your faith is. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Philippians, Paul says in Philippians 1 and 6, being confident of this one thing, this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Did you hear? Until Jesus Christ comes, you can trust him to perform. He will keep doing what he's called to do. He's already done the main thing when he went on the cross, when he died, when he shed his blood. So all of that was done so that you could have life. And the Bible says, Jesus says, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. We, the Bible also says the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But if you ask for anything in Jesus' name, he says he'll do it. He'll do it. Those things that you ask for in his name. So, so we realize now, if I was to measure my confidence today on a scale from 1 to 10, where would it, where would it land today? Would it be 2, 3? Would it be 5? Would it be up there around 9? See, we got to be able to examine ourselves to see if we're still in the faith. I want you to know today it's not too late. I'm going to say that again. Matter of fact, I'm going to talk to you right now. It's not too late. It's not too late. Get up. Rise. It's time to do. It's not just be a hearer of the word. We have to be a doer of the word. 
Don't let the devil, don't let him steal another day. Don't let him allow you to miss out on another blessing. Because Lord knows we've lost a lot of good time doing things our way and asking for the wrong stuff. How many of us, all of us have fallen to that. All of us have asked for the wrong things from time to time. But, you know, the Bible says, even when I don't know what to pray, the Holy Spirit will make intercession for me. This is why the, the, the prayer is so important, because I want you to know you have a divine hookup. You have a divine hookup with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And God is saying he does. He wants you to he wants you to know that it's not too late and you can make it. Mm, isn't it good to know you can make it today? Why can I make it today? You can make it today because he will never leave you nor forsake you. He got you covered. He got your Bible says he'll be your rear guard, meaning I, I got your back. You know, we have to make him our Shekinah glory. When I say make him our Shekinah glory, he was that cloud by day and that pillar of fire by night for the Israelites. When they was going through their wilderness, he was their cloud by day, offering them shade. Are you hearing me? Offering them shade. He was, he was, he was allowing them to, 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 to know that if you just keep following me, keep following that cloud. And that's what we have to do. We have to stay up under that cloud. You know, the Bible says when that cloud stops, they stop. And some of us are moving ahead of God. You don't want to move ahead of God. Why ask God for anything if you're going to move ahead of him? So you want to what? What you want to do is this. You want to ask God and you want to stay up under that cloud. And sometimes you have to demonstrate some patience so that God can bring it to pass. Because sometimes in our waiting, God is allowing you to see really what's in you. What's in you today? What's causing you to be restless? What's causing you to be antsy and not patient enough to, to, to wait for the manifestation of God's will for your life? God want to bless you today. I want you to know you are so blessed. You are more blessed than you think you are. Are you hearing me today? You are more blessed than you think you are. And God's about to do something wonderful in your life. He's waiting for you to ask. You know something? Guess what? Get radical with your prayer request today. I'm t God is telling me to tell you to get radical. Offer up something you don't believe. And God is saying to, for me to tell you today, he want to do something that you just won't even believe will happen in your life. What am I saying? He want to blow your mind. Can you stand to have your mind blown today? Ask anything in, his, in the name of Jesus according to his will. Are you hearing me? And then he's telling me to tell you he will blow your mind. And, you know, he says greater works will we do. God has called you. You have the potential to do great and wonderful things. Don't sleep on that. Don't allow that enemy to rob you of another day of, of being a blessing to your church, to your home, to your job, to your community. Oh, you are that one that can make a difference. And if Jesus is saying greater works will we do than even him, Lord, that is something. Let me pray for you today. Let's believe God today that he's going he's to continue to order our steps. just like he ordered your steps to watch the program today. He's going to order your steps to go forward in life. So, Father, we just want to thank you today for the leading of your spirit. I thank you for my brother, my sister, Father God, who thought in that robbery, Father God, to take this time, this half hour, to give to you watching this program. I pray, Father God, as they will continue to act believing, I pray that as they will walk by faith and not by sight, I pray, Father, that you will not just stir up within them, what, Lord God, you have placed in them, but I pray that there would be a manifestation of that which they are desiring and which is your will for them to have or for them to do. Make it happen for them, God. Forgive us all of our sins. And, Lord, we're so thankful today to know that you love us. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. You know, we, we have... We have daily breads that we would like to send to you so you can maintain that daily walk with Christ. You know, you want to be able to start 
let's just say, being committed to a life of devotion. See, these daily breads are, uh, are given to us, and what I want to do is pass it on to you. I want to be able to pass it on to you so you can have something to read on the subway, or on the bus, when you have that lunch hour, whatever, in the morning or in the evening, you pick this daily bread up and you're able to, let's just say, get a word. Because some of you might not be able to get to a, a church or someplace where you can get one. Just write and call, and we'll be glad to get it out to you free of charge. God bless you now. If you want to catch up with our past shows or if you want to see this show again, you can go on YouTube. Uh, you can follow the credits. You can call us. You can write us. S drop us a line. Let us know how this program is impacting your life. If it's a blessing to you, reach out and let us know. Just like we want to encourage you, come on and encourage us. Let us know that we're making a difference in your life. We love you here at God's Got a Plan, and we want you to know that you can live your best life, and all you have to do is ask Jesus for anything, and he will do it for you if you ask according to his will. We love you now. God bless you. Have a good day. All this we ask in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come back and see us, same time, same place, in the same station. All right? Love you. Bye-bye now.